Okay, guys, I guess better late than never. <laughs> okay. Last week, uh, you had finished going through the infirmary in search of uh, Miyaki and Mun. And you did uh, discover that Miyaki and Mun had already left uh, with Count Laos. And you know that they were headed, headed to the Mysterium in Kathir. Uh, if I, hang on, I'm doing some calculations. Uh, Poppy. Yes. Uh, are we heading on? An, let's see. Just, I think I have it. Okay. As far as I can tell, we're traveling approximately at the speed of plot right now. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> And everyone should be at 11th level now, just as a reminder. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we went and we bought a few things like the dis uh, Spell Magic wa Scrolls and a Wand of... What some Wands of Cure Light Wounds, Wand of Glitter Dust, Uh, that is correct. And we talked about how uh, passage by ship is probably the best way. Uh, unless you all want to find something such as a teleport. <laughs> Which is going to get us there at the same time anyway, because speed of plot. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So let's uh, assume that you all get on a ship and blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> a short while later, which is um, a few months, uh, you all arrive in Kathir. And before you is one of the greatest cities in the known world. Uh, you see a sprawling mass of glittering buildings side by side with ancient creations that struggle to remain standing. Uh, by comparison, uh, Casimir is a village. Um, you see thousands of vessels uh, on the river darting in and out of Kathir's port. Uh, you see countless laborers, sailors, and merchants infesting, infesting the port. And in places the river is so thick with boats that it seems possible to cross the river uh, without getting your feet wet. And you would know that um, Katir uh, has a long and illustrious history, and it is the seat of education and trade. Um, and it stands at the farthest western reach of the Kelish Empire. Okay. And uh, as as we've truly talked about, hang on, Kellish Empire, like the C H E L, like that hunter from before. Um. <laughs> Remember the hunter. Uh, K E L E S H. Okay, so different than what? What was she then?
You uh, know who I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, she she was a Darrow. No, no, no. The uh, from the last book, the hunter on the Dreamlands who was using the. Oh, 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 oh. Um. Shit! What was her name? Um. Calvetta Bricks. But this is then she was Chellish, but we're talking about what how is this spelled this time? Because you said it was with a K, right? Ah, uh, yes, it is with a K. Can you spell out the name of the region or whatever? Because I think you can understand why I was like, wait, is this the same thing? That was Calvetta Bricks, right? Yeah, that was the hunter's name, but this is apparently a different region than where she was from, right? You said it started with a K? Uh, Pathfinder... Ah, uh, hell, I can open up the book. can't because I've already deleted it. Uh, sorry, I can't answer that question right this moment. Okay. Yeah, I did housekeeping not too long ago and deleted the old modules. Sorry. Um... <laughs> But as uh, we talked about, you're moving along at the speed of plot, and truly you're in this magnificent port city. But um, uh, the adventure uh, assumes that you are hurrying along from, you know, you have one purpose in being in this city, and that's all they cover in this AP. <laughs> Okay, so you're saying all that it's covering is the taverns where Poppy's going to be drinking? <laughs> uh, well, your prime. I got you back, Poppy. Well, we'll find you the, the best water in Old Street to start brawls. So. Uh, yeah, the the primary focus of uh, uh, each adventure spot in this book is uh, all that's outlined. Uh, so you're here to find the Mysterium. And hopefully, uh, Count Lyles, but we know the answer to that. And I'm sure you would have done some research on the boat over, would you not have well, I'm sure at a minimum I would have read that leather pamphlet, right? Yeah. Um... You know that the Mysterium is located on the University District uh, on the edge of the campus of the Viken College of... <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to share that one with you. Where did you go to school? <laughs> well, it wasn't the Venetian College of Medicaments and Chirurgery. <laughs> um, but you uh, see the stout st sandstone building. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know that it was uh, built in the early decades of Kathir's founding by Kelly scholars. Um, the library has since come under the control of a sect of Nethus worshippers 
named the Stewards of the Vault, and they've turned the Mysterium into a temple of sorts. Um, you know, while worship certainly takes place within the Mysterium, it is still primarily a place of study and instruction. Um, And with uh, following Laos and so forth, uh, you know something that most people wouldn't know about the Mysterium, and that it has a more important purpose, and it is a secure depository of rare and dangerous books. Uh, you already know the vile Necrocromicon. Um, resides um, at the building um, and you know that uh, Count Lyles was um, you know concerned about safeguards and protections that were built into um, the Mysterium and he wasn't taking uh, those defenses lightly But, you know, uh, you end up going to the university district and um, it's rather easy for you to find someone that points it out to you. And as you approach the Mysterium, uh, you see the stout sandstone building topped with a pyramid and decorated with statues of angelic creatures on its four corners. And, uh, you know, your research shows that it is one of the oldest arcane libraries. And, um, you also notice is that... It, the is it really smaller than a football field? Because this is only like 100 feet by like 150 feet or something. Uh, Maybe there's multiple levels. It, yeah, it, it's like four levels. Um, the walls of the building you see are carved with these smiling angels. Some of them are armed with spears and shields. Um, but they're still smiling. Yes. And you see angels bearing frowns and concerned faces uh, gripping a curious round uh, rusted iron doorway set into smooth sandstone walls and you see a braided copper bell pull hanging nearby and uh, you see um, Looking at the doorway closer, you see three sets of iron bars, three inches thick, have recently been installed across the door. And they are lashed by chains to the circular door. <laughs> so it's locked currently. Uh, yes, and you're a little further back then. Or we'll get Poppy and Sis and say, whew, it's locked down, no worries, it's safe, let's go drink. <laughs> I'm down with that. Crisis averted, if everything's okay, guys. <laughs> you know what, I, I didn't want to tell you guys this at the time, but... Uh, you know, I every day on the trip over here, I would like get behind the sails and I'd like blow into the sails to give us a little just a bit more speed. So that's why I obviously beat Lyle's here. Clearly. <laughs>
uh, but as you uh, get closer to um, the Mysterium, uh, you see um, uh, there's six guards standing out front of the entrance. Sick em, Poppy. I'd like to get a, a rough read on them. What's their general demeanor? There's a 30 on sense motive. Uh, uh, you can tell that they're nervous. About us or about something else? Uh, uh, you can tell that they're nervous in general. Is it Poppy? You can um, say it's Poppy. Uh, no, I don't think it's Poppy right now. It might be well, before the night's over. Clearly, something more threatening than I am is in the is in the vicinity. <laughs> That's like saying something heavier than gravity is in the vicinity. Those words just don't make any sense. Yeah, you know what that means? Run the other fucking way. All right, we're out. It was good. I went to meet. We're just gonna enjoy the rest of the the time we have before this gets swallowed into some old gods' soul, you know, belly or something, whatever. <laughs> Oh, you're not even going to try out your 11th level powers. You know, I'm good, I'm good. You know, I made it over 50% of the way to max level. I figured that's that's more than most people could ever hope for. <laughs> All right, I'll approach the six guards and, you know, not being, like, overly cheerful, just say hail. Uh, as you approach, um... You, they all draw their weapons except for the one that takes a step forward and uh, you know he puts out his hand and he, he says stop right there I'll raise my eyebrow at him and wait and see if what he's going to say um They inform you that the museum is closed. I see. Uh, these are the normal operating hours, are they not? Uh, yes, they are. Um, uh, however, uh, we've had to uh, close prematurely. I see, so when are you reopening then? And here's the more important question. Do these guys all look like more robots of Manaki and Mun? Uh, Are we getting no, the brush off the second time here? By the uh, no, they don't, and uh, you can tell, um, as since you've already done a sense motive, and you're studying them um you know that they seem to be more anxious about what may be in the building versus um you being there you know they're treating you just like you know normal visitors to the mysterium and saying hey we're closed try back later Well, you know, since we're traveling at the speed of plot and, you know, could, we'll either arrive just in time or just not in time, you know, no matter what, uh, I'll go ahead and be a little crazy and I'll say, well, we're looking for uh, a Count Lyles to take back to stand trial for crimes he committed back in Ust Ustalov, how, how is that pronounced? In Taldor, I'll just go with that, in Taldor, yeah. in the Taldor region. Have you seen him lately? Um, uh, sir, uh, I, I, I'm just a guard. Um, uh, if you're seeking information, um, uh, 
about visitors. Um, our elder is um, currently away. Um, the The next priest is uh, Elder Tear, and. And, um, you know, um, I would suggest uh, speaking with him, but uh, right now we have strict instructions to keep everyone out of the library. Where can we find him? Uh, oh, that's easy. Uh, he's in uh, apartment number two across the street. All right, thank you. And presumably we walk across the street and find apartment number two. And if I referred to the elder as a he, uh, it is a she. <laughs> That's one weird looking dude. Is this Pisa's attempts at transgender stuff? <laughs> dude, looks, dude looks like a lady. Uh, okay. Um, I, you, you see this woman, and she's walking with the aid of a of a cane. Uh, she's simply dressed, and uh, she says hello with this incredibly soft voice. And she goes, um, uh, greetings, uh, gentlemen and lady. What can I do for you? What? I don't have my hearing aid. Big up. <laughs> okay, what well, actually see that. But you said she had an incredibly soft voice, okay? And the things we've been through wouldn't surprise me if some of us had tinnitus. <laughs> Uh, so, hello. Uh, you uh, came here to visit the Mysterium as we're in pursuit of a fugitive named Count Laos. We had reason to believe he was coming here. The guards seem to claim that the place is closed and suggested we speak to you. Oh, um, that you, you say uh, Laos is a fugitive? Correct. Uh, from who and from why? I'm from Taldorian authorities for murder, br uh, brainwashing, mind wiping, planar rift disruption, probably a number of other things that I'm not even aware of. He's yucky. Uh, so you're just, uh, hired help to find Laos? Well, we've all been, uh, let's say personally, uh, harmed by Laos in one way or another, so I admit we have a bit of a personal stake in this. Well, uh, she offers you all to come in and sit down and, um, uh, she asks you, uh, you know, to relay your story, and, you know, you all talk for a few minutes, and, uh, uh, you know that she's testing you somehow just by the questions that she's asking. And, uh, she says, uh, yes, uh, Lyles was here. and <laughs> created uh, quite a bit of trouble for us, I, was, <laughs> I might say. Oh? Uh, yes, uh, he, um, uh, you know, he gained access to the Mysterium, and uh, he worked his way down to the uh, lower level Uh, which 
is yeah uh, he worked his way down to the soul of the Mysterium where we uh, keep the um, the truly, truly dangerous text like the Necrocom Necrocom Necrocomicon. Damn, I cannot say that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Comic Con. <laughs> we're going to Zombie Comic Con. Oh man, four more dental appointments. I cannot fucking wait. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, where they keep the uh, truly dangerous books. And um, she's like, uh, he, and he managed to make off with the book. Um, if you all catch him, uh, would you return the book? I mean can't give any guarantee on what that might be because we don't know where he is or where he's gone. Well, I understand him, but chances are if you catch him and, uh, it, you know, you got to return him for trial and so forth, then, you know, we might be on the way if you would promise just to make sure that the book gets back to us where we can protect and defend it. <laughs> If we're able to catch up to Laos and he still has the book, and we're able to retrieve the book without it getting destroyed or something, and, you know, we're able to return it intact because nothing happens to it, yes, we'll return it. Uh, but given some of the crazy things we've dealt with that Laos has stirred up, you know, I'm, I'm hedging my bets here a bit. For all I know, it could already be destroyed in some ritual he's performing. Well, we would uh, definitely appreciate it, and granted, we would pay for its return. But, uh, yes, uh, Laos broke in and, you know, uh, created quite a bit of trouble for us that, uh, you know, we could use your help if you're interested. I don't... And truly, uh, no one's been in the Mysterium since, uh, <laughs> well, uh, there's a few issues that we're dealing with, but uh, we haven't been able to make it into the lower level to see uh, <sighs> if Laos has taken anything else or what clues he may have left behind. Look, um, here's the thing, as far as I can tell. You haven't mentioned any kind of, like, imminent crises here, crisis here, and you seem to have the place fairly locked down. So my concern would be that if we help you right now, that gives Laos another day or two to get ahead of us. I mean... I mean, basically, you're saying, do you want us to be trying to chase down the book that was stolen, or do you want us to be trying to clean up this place? Because that, you know, doing one makes the other harder to do. Um, well, you know, you would be leaving the scene of the crime without um, searching it. <laughs> and Was that a meta comment there? <laughs> <laughs> or is that an in-character comment? Uh, that was in-character. And, um... You know, so um... I think he left clues where he might be headed. I take it you don't have any idea where he is headed. Uh, no. Uh, we're... Uh, with his... Lyles has been there for a little while. Um, he found a faster method of um, transport but he worked his way in with um, you know the Mysterium uh, 
occasionally has money problems and you know he gave a nice grant which gave him access to it and just from his research and so forth uh, you know we're assuming that he did take the ne Necrocomicon whatever <laughs> and but uh, we're not totally sure because like I said uh, we haven't been able to get back into the soul because of the defenses that Laos set off and um, and, you know, uh, she tells you, you know, that the entry level of the Mysterium had an enchanted mirror that was supposed to summon uh, Aksumites. Does that mean anything to me? Uh, uh, they resemble a flawless, perfect example of an elf. Uh, they are a medium outsider. Um, when it moves, parts of its body dissolve into a golden crystalline dust, and it swirls around even if there's no wind. And you can see when it stops moving that all the dust catches up with it and as it's catching up to it you can see symbols and equations and then it reforms into flesh just a moment later but something went wrong and uh, hounds of uh, Tindalos appeared in the halls uh, fortunately, we've been able to contain the hounds inside the Mysterium, and they haven't ventured into the city to terrorize the locals. And, you know, um, she tells you that there's a spherical chamber in the center of the first level which is built into the body of the pyramid. Uh, the chamber is used by priests to meditate in complete darkness while levitating. Um, she thinks that, you know, if you go in it might provide you some protection from the hounds if you need a place where you can rest or retreat. But to truly make the Mysterium safe, uh, you've got to venture into the depths of the building to the level that uh, contains the soul. And it's a chamber at the very core of the library. Uh, she explains that there is an angel statue without eyes. And you have to insert your fingers into the eye sockets in order to uh, reset um, to reset everything so if we manage to find this angel statue without eyes and put our fingers in its eye sockets then the mirror and everything else gets shut down uh, correct And uh, she tells you that in order to navigate the library on each level, you need to find the four different angel statues that have heads that swivel. And you have to turn the heads to face the walls. And once they're all manipulated, uh, the gateways between the different li the different levels of the library can be open. All right. And she goes. Just to be safe. Uh, absolutely. 
Uh, she tells you that, uh, you know, there's lingering dangers in the lower levels. Uh, the last time that uh, everything was triggered, which was nearly a hundred years ago, uh, uh, many of their followers and other scholars were killed. And their lasting psychic impressions have been known to rear up at times in bizarre and dangerous manifestations when people are studying in the lower levels. Uh, so don't totally freak out. Um, And generally, those that venture into the lower levels already know to look out for these manifestations. And a lot of them take a priest with them uh, to have a greater chance at combating them. Um, they have purged many of the manifestations, but there's still numerous ones that the clergy haven't been able to figure out how to permanently get rid of. And she also warns that some of these haunts might have warped and changed like the the Guardian Mirror. And uh, she has uh, one final request from you, if you would. Um, and uh, if you can find and secure the body of Elder, Elder Lithian um, and if you have time if you'd say a prayer over all the bodies and uh, she will provide you with some, uh, you know, funerary cloths. And, um, you know, if, if you make the, um, the place safe, uh, she'll allow you unfettered access to the library for a week and provide you with a cash reward. I'll raise an eyebrow at Poppy and Sis to see if they have any objections. I have no objections. None here. All right. Anything else? Uh, is she uh walks over to a desk and pulls out a uh, piece of parchment and writes a note and. Uh, give this to the guards. Uh, they will um, allow you entry into the Mysterium. Uh, they will bar the doors behind you, though, until you signal that it is safe to exit. I guess I'm confused, so how are they going to know it's safe for us to exit? Uh, you'll be able to ring the bell from the inside. And that bell doesn't work until the statue's eyes are filled with fingers? Uh, she says you'll figure it like out. That. Uh, you know, the bell at the door uh, is both ways. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to determine is whether she's saying something like that, you know, in order to get out, make sure you ring the bell, or until some criteria is met, their guards aren't opening the door, period, until everything is done, which they somehow know. 
Uh, they will not open the door until you signal them that it is safe to do so. Okay. And safe to do so in this context means like the immediate vicinity is safe to open the door temporarily, or the entire facility is safe? Uh, you, you'll, you'll figure it out. Talk to the guards about it. Right. Okay, if you were apparently planning to uh, lock us in, are there any particular precautions or supplies that we should have? Any wards that require specific spells or materials or anything like that? Um, you know about the mirror, you know about the hounds, you know about the ghost. I don't the three levels down, they're like, okay, now have the cleric cast, you know, cure critical wounds on the door, and whoop, we don't have anyone who can cast cure critical wounds, so we're just stuck and can't do anything. <laughs> and then we're like, guards, we need to come out so we can get a wand of, of cure, you know, scroll of cure critical wounds, and like, nope, uh-uh, and then we have to break down the door somehow, and then we fight the guards and kill them, Mysterium people, and then it all goes to hell. Uh, there's a possibility that you can get out once you go in. Okay. Uh, a lot of it depends on how hot you are when you're trying to come out. <laughs> yeah, if you have cre gigantic creatures chasing you down, they're not going to open the door. I'm talking about my physical attractiveness. I'm like, what kind of check do you want me to make? To just raw charisma or something? But no. Um. <laughs> yes, presumably we're not running up to there saying, you know, shaking the panels like, let us out, let us out, as the beast and like impales us from the rear or something, as it's, you know, claws passes through the iron bar and through our heart. Yes, not, we're not going to have that situation ideally. But yeah, we'll uh, cross that when we come to it. But as you uh, approach uh, the Mysterium again, you know, the guards are still, uh, you know, their hands are on their weapons, but, you know, that you were just here, they know where you went, so, you know, they're not That's threatening. And uh, the same guy walks up to you and says, well, how'd it go? We're going in. And you notice um, <laughs> there's a little bit of fear in his eyes and uh, he starts to bark out an order and, you know, he stops for a moment and collects himself and he's like, okay, boys, we're going to open the door and let these guys in. And when he says that, you notice everyone draws their weapon. It's okay, we're just going to saunter in like we own the place without even drawing our weapons, <laughs> just you know, to show how badass we are. And you can tell that, uh, you know, the guards are uh, <laughs> growing increasingly nervous and you know uh, as they um, it takes them a little while to uh, remove the chains and um, they stick the key in the door and when it's being unlocked it's just making this unsettling grinding noise and a couple of them, uh, you know, they're all standing guard around the door and two of them move forward and they push one of the doors open and it's like, come on, get in there, get in there. And they're practically shoving you into the Mysterium. 
and uh, Steph, assuming that you're the last person pushed through the door, uh, just as you clear the door, they're already shutting it, and you can hear the lock grinding and the chains being put on the door. Bastards. <laughs> and you can see that you enter into a hallway and that's three oh three oh six. Okay, uh, you can tell that you're in a hallway. Uh, it goes left and right, and straight ahead of you, you can see that it goes uh, on down to the end, and you can see um, this five foot wide. Um, circular valve that's made out of iron and it's depicting four angel faces smiling and licking upwards to the ceiling and you can see uh, smaller statues uh, to the east of you All right, I'll suggest that Sith uh, hand up the barkskin extracts at this point as I cast heroism on people and see invisibility on myself. Okay. And there's a shitload of doors. <laughs> and I'm going to save a little bit of time. and unmask the car doors Now, I believe, remember, I think we had to give Poppy a separate effect, right? Because, like, right now, I think Poppy... Oh, Poppy... Oh, did, what, did it get fixed? Poppy, do you have an amulet of natural armor on? Poppy? Did we lose the popster? I think we did. Don't think he's there. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, He's got two bark, sp bark skins, and one of them is uh, AC2, the other is AC3. Okay, if you go to the combat tab for Poppy's character, what does it say under the Nat column? Uh, plus two. This might have gotten fixed somehow. Because Poppy's only showing defense effects plus four. Two from the it's from the natural thing, and then extra from the bark skin. So apparently it got fixed between now and the last time we played. Cool.
Okay, so uh, you're not seeing uh, any immediate threats. All right. Well, let's pop the uh, lead in the way once he's you know back. So what exactly are we seeing here? It's just like we look down. It's a normal corridor. Like the see how high is the ceiling? Is that just like? Oh, uh, okay. Um, inside the Mysterium. Um, uh, it's crammed with thousands of books, grimoires, and arcane paraphernalia, tripods, blank parchment, workbenches, scrolls, tubes retorts, uh, chalks and slates, and so forth. Uh, it's crowded, but it's tidy. Uh, the ceilings are 15 foot high and made of finely polished sandstone. Um, the doors are hefty wood doors, and they are carved with dozens of faces depicting a wide range of moods. Um, and uh, every so often um, you will see angelic figures gracing the building and they are holding aloft keystones and uh, let's see Uh, you can tell that the statues are made of white marble, but uh, you can tell they have a skin of pollution from the city's smoke and dust. How unsanitary. Alright, so I'll go examine this first statue in the bottom right, I guess. For starters, I'm already confused because we were told to swivel the heads of statues to face the walls, but then they put the statue in the corner, so which wall is it supposed to face? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really? Okay, uh, as you walk up to it, uh, you examine it, uh, you can tell that the statue's head does indeed swivel. Okay, but we have no idea what it's... Is, there in, is it closer to one wall compared to the other? Uh, no. Um, it, you know, she she was just, you know, you gotta turn the statue's head to face the wall. So, you know, make a note of it. and. <laughs> okay. We'll start by turning in its head to face like the southeast corner. I guess, whatever. We'll see what happens. Okay. Poppy's over there with you. Uh, before opening the door, I'll make a perception check. Do I notice any sounds or anything coming from inside? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, you do not. Is there anything you'd like to do before Poppy kicks the door open? Uh, do I not? That's uh, maybe Mr. Response. Do I hear anything inside? Uh, no, you do not hear anything inside. All right, I realize this place is probably going to wind up. Oh, it may already be looking like one of Poppy's bar brawls, but in the meantime, let's try to not kick the actual doors down unless we have to, or <laughs> or or just to make sure we're on the same page. When I say not kick them down, that includes throwing bombs at them. 
hitting them with earthbreakers. Poppy just barreling into them. Okay, Poppy punching them down. The point is, let's not wreck the doors unless we have to. Poppy takes the five foot step, readies the earthbreaker, and kind of flips you off. <laughs> 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 and as she swing, pulls back the earthbreaker, she takes her other hand and opens the door. <laughs> Almighty kind of her. Okay. Um... You see a, what is obviously a classroom. And, you know, there's uh, books and papers everywhere. It's a pretty small classroom. One that's like 15 feet, barely, it's less than 20 feet wide, wow. Hey, I didn't do the grid. <laughs> But uh, you can tell that this is where, you know, students receive lectures and sermons. And you can see that they sit on rugs and cushions on the floor. There's a small uh, uh, podium. And... As Poppy opens the door, shall we have Poppy take a five foot step or not? <laughs> Should we what? Should we have Poppy take a five foot step into the room or not? Sure, pull the pen. <laughs> okay. As Poppy steps into the room, uh, books start suddenly flipping open, and the pages begin furiously turning. And as you're watching this, the letters and the words contained in the book uh, you know, they leap from the pages and they begin okay. swirling in the air like a thick, a thick cloud. You're being bombarded by words, Poppy. <laughs> oh, fun. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, you can see this glut of complex ideas and tangled formulas and logical conundrums, and they just keep swirling and forming this this really thick cloud and Poppy it moves towards you and I need you to make a will save because that one's not my weakest save and Poppy they slam into you and Oh, this is funny. Let's add that's on the combat tracker. Wait, did I actually fail on an eighteen? <laughs> uh no you did not. But uh it doesn't give me damage. Fuckers. Uh you take half damage. <laughs> That said, DCs of 20 plus are going to be pretty common at this level. Like if a wizard casts a 6th level spell and has a whole 18 int and not anything more than 18 int and no spell focus and no nothing else, that's still a DC 20. Uh, all these words hit you. And, you know, you take 15 points of damage, which was uh, half of... 10 to 8. 
So, uh, looking over the corner, do I see? I mean, is it? Is there anything relevant in this room, like, or is this something that could be dispersed in any method that I know of with my arcane studies? Uh, you recognize it as being one of the haunts that uh, you know the elder warned you about. And do I see any clues as to what's needed to destroy this particular haunt? Uh, no, you do not. And truly, uh, your main goal, you might find some clues here and there, but your main goal is to get down to the bottom level. All right, okay, Poppy, this is another one of those stupid haunt things like we found in the caravan or can anniversary, which there's no point in trying to do anything with because they're stupid things. The caniversary? Yeah, yeah, the way station. Greenlands, the way station. Remember, there was that one where, like, you went in, and when more than two people were in there, they, they had to make will saves to avoid, like, getting angry with each other, and then apparently you had to have, like, eight people come in and have a conversation for an hour that never raised their voices in order to dispel it or some shit like that. All right. That's never going to fucking happen. Because, you know, they're, even if they're just going to roll ones at some point. Yeah. Alright, so it was up, presumably Poppy takes a five foot step out and the haunt doesn't leave the room, right? Correct. Okay, I'll walk around to there and see what's going on in there. Okay, uh, what? Hang on. Is it just me or is part of this not unmasked? The rooms aren't unmasked. No, but like where you're standing, there's just a, like, Damn it. Now it's unmasked. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll tap Poppy with a wand. We've just burned one out of our 205 charges. We're down to 204. Oh darn. Hey, if every single time you step into a room we have to waste a, a wand of uh, a charge, you know, we're going to run up pretty damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's funny you should mention that, Eric, because uh, as you round the corner and you 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 look into the room, uh, you can see that uh, it's got a cot, and you know um, you can see things that make you think that this is like uh, an infirmary chamber, and you know. Uh, uh, you can see a healer's kit um, there's a potion and a scroll and a small shelf on the wall and as you look at it you can tell that it's uh, a potion of cure, cure light wounds and a scroll of lesser restoration but these rooms are uh, used uh, to treat those people who get injured while practicing their spell casting. Well, I think that's definitely going to qualify us here, so let's grab this shit. Alright, if I don't see anything else that's interesting, I'll move around over to here. I believe the other two are relatively close to me, and I'll try this door. Um, well, before you do that, I'm going to hit this other one right there. And uh, let's see, that's the north. And once again, it's another infirmary room with uh, the same stuff, which is now in the party sheet. Oh boy, we're stocking up on shit. Okay. What? What? Sorry, um, bitching about the map here. <laughs> I 
Okay, if it's a secret chamber, why the hell did you put a big five foot door on it? <laughs> Sorry, where did we find the secret chamber? The door you're standing at right there. Is it secret and a five foot door? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it it's a five foot door. I'm very confused. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to see that door that we're sta you're standing in front of. And, and, uh, yeah, is this, that also supposed to be secret over uh, there? Uh, this is the, uh, the player's um, map, even. Um, according to the description, uh, the door to this chamber lurks behind a pair, a carved pair of dancing angels. And you've got to pull the angels apart to open the door. <laughs> and as you do that, um, the action of pulling them apart causes their expressions to subtly change from joy to anger. And, uh,. Uh, yes, uh, that other door would be hidden as well. But with our brilliant perception rules in real life, we managed to notice it, apparently. Uh, n no kidding. Um, and once we push aside the angels and they get angry at us and fuck them, who cares? Uh, there's a haunts in here, this shit. <laughs> do, do we notice anything in this little hidden chamber? Uh, you know, I, uh... <laughs> Fantasy Grounds put the pin in the wrong spot. <laughs> For the story entry? Because that's actually the hidden chamber. Ah. So, uh, anyway, th uh, Eric, what you find there is uh, just the uh, doorway. Um. But yeah, it's a, just a uh, doorway that goes to the hallway that leads to... Another door that goes into the classroom. Okay, how about this door, which presumably is also a door? Uh, you can tell that it is a um, study cubicle. Um, it's got a couple of uh, sturdy but worn out worn desk and a small chair you can see quills inks and a number of sheets of paper for note taking um, and uh, you know that like university students would not be allowed access to the lower levels of the mysterium so, you know, the priest would go to the stacks to retrieve the requested books, and then they bring them back to these rooms where, you know, visitors can conduct their research. Okay, I don't suppose there happens to be a note that says, you know, hey, Lyles is going to hear, he told us that at the lecture yesterday. Uh, no, you do not see that. <laughs> Damn, that would have made this a lot simpler. Okay, what about on the other side here? Okay, I'm just going to speed this along. Um, it, it, it's just a flipped layout. Um, you've got the study cubicles and so forth, and the classroom. Just opening the door over here without going into it, does it look like there's anything we would possibly care about in the room? Uh, no. Okay. We'll go to the statue over here. I will turn it so it faces the west wall. 
Okay, and um, down at the far end of the hall, which uh, you would have noticed when you were up there, um, is the <laughs> yeah, just to retcon a little bit, uh, when you were robbing the infirmaries, uh, you did notice uh, the large mirror with um, angelic features frolicking with dogs and other benign animals around this large dark mirror and the mirror is Jesus five about how gone. Uh, the mirror is five feet wide eight foot high it's made of polished shield of steel and its frame is a uh, pewter So this is the thing which was supposed to summon the Axiomites and instead, like, summon towns or something, you said? Uh, yes. Okay, well, unless we're going to, like, try to smash it apart, presumably we just stay away from it for now. Uh, yes. Uh, however, as you're turning uh, the statue's head and so forth, uh, you can hear, you know, the crackling sound of magic and energy coming from that mirror. It's okay, I cast a spell magic on it and stop whatever's happening from happening. <laughs> it's gonna be like that, huh? Well, that requires, uh, Okay, uh, if you want to try it, let's do it. Okay, well, let's let me, before I actually expend a scroll on that, uh, if I so if I'm turning around, it looks like magic is occurring from the mirror. Yes, it does. All right, I am going to. You can tell that. Uh, you can tell that the device has been activated. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to use my lore master ability. Which would just add ten. And I'm going to consult my book of the lore master. So ignore the roll. So with a forty eight Ledge Arcana what exactly can I tell about the magic emerging from the mirror and what effects would things like dispel magic have on it? I'm studying the mirror and hearing about the mirror and now observing the mirror. 48 Knowledge Arcana. Uh, okay, uh, you're pretty sure that A, something is getting ready to come out of the mirror. B, uh, dispel magic uh, may work. Uh, would dispel magic be like dispelling the current thing, or would it be shutting the whole mirror down permanently, or something? Uh, it would be shutting the mirror down. For good? As in, like, they're going to be upset that we broke their mirror type thing? Uh, you know, they told you to secure the Mysterium, they did not tell you how. Alright. Well, uh, we will keep that in mind as a nuclear option, though. If we're going to dispel, you know, it might be easier just to smash it at that point, if that's what's necessary. So, uh, let's see what happens here, I guess. Well, it's a steel mirror, so... <laughs> what, a steel mirror? Yeah, it's made out of polished... Poppy can hit really hard. <laughs> So it still only has DR10, so a hardness 10. I think it's much harder than that at this point. Oh, well, let's put a test to that theory. 
No. Uh, well, you're you're on the other side of the hallway. <laughs> Puppy takes Earthbreaker and hurls it all the way down the hallway. Uh, well. Oh, it's all the way over there. Uh, yeah. Uh, and presumably uh, we're about to start. You know, I'm going to start Bardic performance. Um, and I'm going to start singing "Who Let the Dogs Out." And uh, after you're done applying your buffs, uh, why don't you uh, roll for initiative? And you see this mirror, four hounds emerge from the mirror. And a haunt. And the haunt is gone. Bye bye. Do I recognize these things? Uh, well, you know, without even trying, uh, you're pretty sure that these are the hounds of Ten Tendalos that uh, you know she mentioned. Um, you know that hounds. Um, You know that they can move through dimensions and emerge through angles. Um, <laughs> uh, you know that if an area can be located or magically created that has no angles, in other words, a perfect spear, uh, the hounds can't reach you. Hence why that special chamber that they're talking about, how convenient. And okay. Uh, do you that... have, why do you think you have a minus one to your initiative? Uh, my initiative is plus six, but when I rolled it, gave me a plus five. So I don't know why where I missed a one in there somewhere. What's your dexterity? Eighteen. But there's. A you on under miscellaneous is it like a trait maybe no that's fine just move on I just didn't I didn't know if there was some effect I wasn't aware of that was I don't see an effect on you there do that yeah me neither that's why I didn't understand why the character sheet says plus six but the roll showed a plus five so uh, we're gonna back up just a little bit and do the secret chamber Okay. Because uh, you would have noticed it when you were walking down the hallway right there. Um, you uh, pull the angels apart and notice that their uh, expressions change from joy to wrath. Uh, inside you see a small chamber containing a store of items. Uh, you find six blank spell books. A uh, brand new alchemist lab packed into a crate. Uh, six vials of holy water. Uh, Twenty wands that have been used. A, lo a large cauldron. Uh, a dozen bone scroll cases. And a huge supply of quills and inks and tablets. Um... Excellent. So after we kill these hounds, we can use the, you know, the uh, ink and parchment to write like, you just got poppied and leave notes on their bodies to make the other hounds afraid. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, however, a ivory scroll case uh, catches your eye, and you can see that it's been carved with images of swallows in flight.
and uh, examining the uh, ivory scroll case uh, you find two scrolls of removed disease and three scrolls of restoration well legitimate restoration that's good okay coming down the hallway you would have also noticed a ladder against that wall going up to a um, a concealed door um, and from the description that the elder gave you um, you're pretty sure that that ladder and the concealed door uh, leads up to the meditation chamber that she was talking about. Sorry, where? What is? Where is the thing that's leading up to the meditation chamber? Uh, it's the uh, red arrow on the map, right there. So in the stu in the study chamber, there's a ladder that's hidden somehow against the wall or something. No, no. Uh, there's a ladder bolted up against the wall that goes up in to the okay. in the hallway that goes up uh, to a concealed door. Not a secret door, but you know, it's uh, you can tell it's been used and the ladder's worn, but you know, for aesthetics, they tried to hide the door. <laughs> okay, so basically, we might be safe from in that chamber up there from them teleporting in on us, but they can still bite down the door or something. So uh, 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 if that. If that room is truly a circle, um, you know that you will be protected in it. Okay, well I guess we can find out when it comes time. But I think right now uh, somebody let the dogs out. Wintermute let the dogs out, right? Uh, Wintermute let the dogs out. Uh, everyone has rolled for initiative. And <laughs> imagine that, Eric, you're up. Alright, I am going to start up my bard song. I'm going to only try to use a few rounds here if at all possible. Because these dogs may just keep coming. So I am going to put Inspire Courage on the three of us. My discordant voice is now active on the three of us. And then I am going to ready an action to attack a hound if it gets within, you know, attack distance of me. Okay. Uh, obviously so they you see said you. That they, these things teleported around, right? Uh, they do have... Um... Is that the whole idea is like they can't enter through angled spaces or something? Uh, the day... Or they, through curved spaces. They can move through dimensions, but they exit at the corners. Uh, okay. You know, they can't get you in the middle of the wall, but uh, like where Sith and Poppy is, you know, he could come out right there. Or right there at the corner between the bookshelf and the wall? Right. And like even like at any point here, you could argue that there's angles from the books. <laughs> we'll see what these things do. And uh, and you know that uh, they have uh, DR10 magic. Uh, they're immune to poison. Um, their damage type is evil and magic. Uh, they're immune to mind-altering effects. Um, you know, it's not a good idea to try to attempt to read their... their mind unless you are a outsider. 
And you know that they have a uh, a ripping gaze that um, causes slashing damage. But you do get a fort save on it. And uh, and one just starts running down the hall. Uh, can I charge up to meet it? Keep in mind that, I mean, I'll shout it out, these things can teleport around. So basically what I'm trying to get at is that if we all, if we charge up to meet it, the rest of them may, like, teleport and just swarm stuff. So we probably want to stick together against these things. Oh, okay. And I say this on, on a meta level, right? Well, I just had a game on my Monday night session where the party was facing some demons in a wide out open area, and they like split up to tackle individual demons, and the demons just said, "Okay, then," and all just greater teleported next to the party sorcerer and like literally surrounded him and clawed him and mauled him to death because <laughs> everyone else ran away from him. And the like the demons like, "We can fucking teleport, dudes. Why are you doing this?" Thanks. So I'm trying to make sure that doesn't happen to us. Okay, well, in that case, I will just... You could probably just delay, frankly, because that way, as soon as one comes into range, you can full attack it. Yeah. So, I will ready in action to attack whoever gets within reach of my hammer first. Or you could do that, or you could just delay, so that way you can fight with stuff and full attack if it gets... whenever one gets close enough. If you uh, ready, which, whichever is the better option, I do it. Okay, he delays in this case because he didn't need to take a move action to start up his bard song. Okay, and let's see. My character is busy, busy muttering out mathematical equations as he calculates the angles of the various things around us. <laughs> Okay, um, you can see number 10 kind of jumps into the corner of the wall there. And it comes out right in the middle of you all. Okay, that triggers my ready to action. So I would now be... Basically, I'd be between Hound 1 and Hound 10. So, you would need to adjust initiative as appropriate to do that. 16.9, that would make you 16.8. And then I poppy. strike out of the thing, I hit it. I do 20 damage. Do I, oh yeah, I do 20 damage to it. Sure. Poppy is delayed, so Poppy's technically at 15. Okay, and let's see, that was all a standard action. That would be 10 foot of movement, though. And it's, uh, pops out, and you know, it sees Poppy, and it's going to try and swing at it with its claws, and one of them does hit, and Poppy takes a little bit of damage, and Poppy, you have this very ugly hound in front of you, or behind you actually. Okay, well, I hope he is happy with his decision. 
<laughs> um, just future reference. I mean, if there's four of these things, chances are if power attack it's probably a good idea because I doubt the race is going to be that insane if there's this many of them. All right. Okay, and uh, hound number 12 kind of pops into that same corner and He comes out of the wall down there. Okay, Sith. All right. Uh, well, these guys don't seem that all that, so I'm going to move five feet back, and I will use my bow and arrow. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's see here. So, longbow. And he flops to the ground dead. Oh, I see. Okay, so I, that sonic attack—that's that's from uh, Eric. Me. Okay, that's what I thought, but I had not seen that before. I assume that's oh. an eleventh level thing. Sure, just song, discordant voice. It adds one d six sonic damage to people under the influence of my attack, presuming both you and your target are within thirty feet of me. So if you launch a bomb, so if you're like sixty feet away, launching a bomb at somebody between us, as far as I can tell, it doesn't apply. Both you and the person have to be within thirty feet. Oh, okay. I think. All right, but for now, the important thing is that the Hound of Tindalos is dead. Flopping on the ground next to Poppy, who probably steps on its head. I mean, that's what the description is going to mean. So the main question is, um, basically, if, if Sith is 500 feet away and shoots at a target right in front of my face, then... He's making his weapon attack from outside the 30 feet, but the projectile impact is hitting within 30 feet of me, so what happens? Does it apply or not? Uh, yeah, as long as his target's within 30 feet of you. Okay, so then it's it's more, uh, yeah, okay, there you go, Steph. So you have more flexibility, you just have to shoot stuff within 30 feet of me. Okay. Okay. And number four. Number four runs down, and Eric, he, he is just making eye contact with you. And, um... Hey, if he's wanting to talk, we're willing to discuss things. Oh, no. Uh, it's an angry gaze that's happening, and I need you to make a fortitude save. <laughs> you know, I'm not feeling so good about that, so I'm going to end my bardic performance. <laughs> and uh, do a saving finale. I got a 22 on my re-roll. Uh, okay. Uh, you made it on your re-roll.
and number one's gonna come down and it's gonna hop into that corner and it's going to emerge from the corner where you're at behind you Eric and it's going to try and bite you and it snaps but you're able to move out of the way did I even have to dodge that? no you did not <laughs> Uh, I'll spend another move action to restart my Inspire Courage, which is why I didn't bother taking it off of myself. I will take one swing at the thing. Wishing I had something like Power Attack. And then I will 5 foot step over to there. I assume that this is effectively a 10 foot wide hallway that we can use both squares of, right? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Oh, right, no, sorry. Poppy! I guess I will five foot step this away. Bop this sucker on the head. Okay, number 12's going to come down. And then it's going to try and bite you, Poppy. You're shitting me. <laughs> <laughs> First I have a hearty laugh at the Indian's <laughs> expense. <laughs> then I fire my weapon. Okay, number four. Nope. Again. <laughs> Tried. Not a Look, one. I'm just saying, if these things are spawning randomly for the mirror, I wouldn't get too cocky because there may be like one of these spawning every pack of these spawning every five minutes, okay? Like, okay. I, I, that's why I'm being kind of conservative with the buffs and I'm hoping we're not using bombs because if, if, if the, we have to face like a pack I'm of these. I'm just shooting them with arrows. Okay. I don't uh, have a lot to live for, so if I get a mock at the end, this is kind of the highlight of my day. So, <laughs> don't ruin it for me. so okay. uh, Sith, uh, yeah, you can tell that, uh, you know, the one you just stuck a couple arrows in is staring at you rather intently. And you well, need to make... Of the great attack of opportunity that, oh, he's going to do something stupid like look at me. Uh, absolutely, with and his cutting eyes. Uh, with his cutting eyes, and you need to make a fortitude save. Whatever. Fuck Boom! It. Ha! Again! Ha! <laughs> Anything happen? Nope. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. All right, I'll take a five foot step to there, and I'm gonna use my third and last round for the Bard song here because I, at this at this point after this round, if like all but one will probably be dead, and then I will attack this thing twice, both of which apparently hit.
That's just awesome. <laughs> I'm all teary eyed. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm we... just gonna go ahead and swat the other one. <laughs> That's just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Poppy, I love you, man. <laughs> And I'll take a critical on that bite. Oh darn. Ooh. Good God, what is it with the ones tonight? Um, well, I guess I'm going to have to... If I move to there, can I see, can I uh, shoot at Hound without uh, uh, without yeah. him having any cover? Okay. Yeah, I'll let you do it. Okay. So I, I, that's a five foot step, so I still get my full attack. So let me switch tabs and uh, long move. Boom. You know, you should have point blank shot up. Oh. Oh, I thought I did. Oh, okay. I, I, I think he just needs to point blank shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta be like that? Okay, fine. I will shut up. I will remove my... Uh... Oh, Winchum, you don't have the remove effect extension active. Uh, when we take a break, I'll uh, restart and turn it on. Okay, so I do move to inspire courage to support and voice on me. Remove it on Poppy, and remove it on Sith. Okay. And then I will go ahead and move up to there. And uh, hit this ugly thing. Go ahead, Poppy. Crit my monster. <laughs> Not worth it. What? That was an interesting damage roll, but okay. Why was it interesting? Oh, I know the skin doesn't have the sonic damage anymore. It off. Gotcha. Okay. Right, so, as I was going to say, not worth critting. <laughs> uh, do I know what language, if anything, these dogs speak, or at least understand? Because they they're outsiders, right? They're probably actually intelligent. Uh, Aklo. Okay, so I'm going to get out some of the quill and parchments we had. I'm going to suggest we take the dog's bodies and we just pile them up in front of the mirror over there. Uh, you know, we're going to start barricading the exit of the mirror with these dog bodies as they keep coming after us. And I'm going to write down a note in Aklo, you know, that says, you know, mess with the best, die like the rest. <laughs> Okay. So if they decide to come to the mirror, they gotta really ask themselves one question. Do they feel lucky? Uh, do you, punk? <laughs> and guys, this would be a, a great place to uh, take five or so, and I will uh, turn the remove effect extension on.
Welcome back. What's the what now? Welcome back. I've actually been back for a few minutes, I just didn't hear anyone else talking about anything. And I forgot I wasn't in the session. Okay, so you managed to defeat the four hounds that appeared. And took their bodies. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know, basically create this like ring that like keeps them in the mirror once we get enough of their bodies, right? Um, and of course, since they have to go through angles, you know, their own bodies are like curved, right? So they can't teleport out. They'll just come in blind and just see a stop fucking with us message. Okay, you manage to uh, pile the bodies in front of the mirror. Excellent. Uh, unfortunately, at this point in time, it's not enough to keep anything from coming out of the mirror. I'm just being optimistic once you meet, okay? <laughs> okay. Alright, so we turned that statue's head, we found this secret compartment, we have the ladder over there is to go upstairs, we robbed the two infirmaries, we found the haunt in the lower right, we decided not to mess with the lower left, so it probably has another freaky haunt, we don't see anything in it that looks interesting, so presumably, at this point, we open the door that Poppy and I are next to, that is the north. And you can tell, uh... They are another classroom. It's a okay. it's a similar layout. Do we see anything else on this floor that piques our interest in any way? Uh, no, you do not. All right, so then we'll rotate the statues in the upper left and the upper right, and I'm guessing that does something to the big statue. Okay, as you are rotating the one in the upper left, uh, you can hear the familiar sound of the mirror being activated. Oh, so every time we touch a mirror, this is happening. So why th why isn't this why isn't this the third set of dogs that's being summoned? This is the third statue whose head we've turned, right? Uh, that is correct. But the first time did nothing, but then the second and third times did do something. Correct. And based upon the timing of when we turned it and when we heard it, basically it's like perfectly synchronized, right? Like this, it's not just doesn't seem like it might be on a random time, but it happened exactly when we did that. Correct. Okay. Okay, and you can hear uh, dogs uh, barking, howling, whatever in the hell these hounds do. I'll suggest to Stiff Seth that he gives Poppy a few of the shield potions, too. Also, shouldn't you have your uh, mutagen up, Seth? Oh, you're right, I should. So what am I giving Poppy? Invisibility or shield? Shield. I'll be right back while you guys do that. Okay, so Poppy literally presumably just drinks the extract because we have another statue to open and hopefully it'll at least last for those two, right? The upper left and the upper right. Yeah, I have a total of three shield, and I just used one. Okay, you might want to get where, like, Poppy is, and, you know, Poppy swaps spaces with you, so we're each guarding a different venue. 
obviously can't do that if we want to make it back, but basically let them I'm go. here. Oh, okay. What do you need me to do? What was that, Wintermere? What did you need me to do? Swap Sith and Poppy, basically. In fact, probably just have Sith back in like the corner there, and we can just oh tuck ourselves into the corners. Like that, or you want me? I, I mean, I can't be in the same space as the statue. So how big is the statue? Uh, I can let you hide behind it. Okay, I guess I'm hi hunkered down behind the statue. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, apparently these hounds really decided they wanted to go first. I mean, I guess we can roll initiative again anyway, but, uh... <laughs> okay. I beat one of them. <clears throat> <laughs> now, now gave me an extra plus one on my initiative. Are you have no, plus no, one from your from your mutagen. You have plus two. It gave me plus two for my mutagen. It still has me at a minus one from something else. I don't know what. So if you go, so on your combat tab, for your total initiative score, what does it show you at? Plus six. And the miscellaneous says two, and you have four from Dex. Is that correct? That is correct. Try changing the miscellaneous to like ten for a second, and then roll your initiative again. Oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. Never oh, mind. you you weren't rolling from your character sheet. You put it on the stupid bottom yes, bar, which doesn't and I, work. And I didn't update it when we went to eleventh level. Uh, uh, well, hey, no, screw that shit. Okay. There. It's fixed, so. Okay. There. That's my initiative. Now it works. <laughs> Damn it. I like the 26 better. Anyway. Anyway, I think two of them are at least going first. Yeah. How do you clear it off the bar? Uh, just right click over top the uh, slot you want to clear. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, now I got it. Okay, Sith. Um, uh, I'm just going to hold my action until something shows up. Okay. I will ready an action to attack once one gets close enough. You gonna do the same, Poppy? Yes, I am. Okay, hound number four is coming down. I'm assuming you're all doing the same stuff. Yep. And as he rounds the corner, uh, he jumps into the corner of the wall and comes out, which triggers y'all's actions. <laughs> All right, so I 
So Sith is behind the thing and has cover from it, right? He's shooting around from behind the statue is what we said? Correct. Alright, so it doesn't get an attack of opportunity because we've managed to basically give you cover with the statue. So all of us take an attack. And then we're all effectively at initiative like 26. Is that the full attack? Full round action? No, one attack? shot. It's one shot only. But we're still ahead of it on the initiative, right? So that's the idea. Okay, so he's going to try and bite Eric. Nope. And he's barking and making all kinds of noise. And... And he does a double action, double move, and number nine is going to jump into that wall and emerge down here and try and bite Poppy. Should have went with the wheel save. <laughs> and that one does a uh, double move as well. All right. Um, they can see us, so they may come towards us. So I'm just going to spend one and only one round of bard song here and then I am going to do one attack against this guy as is my standard okay I will do the full round attack and remember, you have cover. I have cover, or he has cover? Uh, he would have cover from you. And oh, vice okay. versa. <laughs> You're covering yeah, each I mean, other. I mean, strictly speaking, the way you determine cover for ranged weapons is different from melee weapons. So, let's say you had person A who was there and you had person B who was there. If, if the circle is a melee attacker, then you draw a... Basically, the square has cover from the circle, but if the square is attacking with a ranged weapon or a reach weapon, the circle does not have cover from the square. Okay, so you wouldn't have cover then, Parker. The Hound would not have cover from Sith, because Sith Correct. is using a ranged weapon. Yes. Because, because Sith gets to attack from any corner he wants, so he can say he's shooting from like the far left corner, for example, or whatever, right? Right. Or, the, or even the, the sh closest corner. He's basically le he's leaning out around to fire along the angle. The hound has to go through the statue. Damn it, one more I would have got a crit. Oh well. <laughs> Please, assi uh, please assign the second one to the second half. Sir. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. I didn't see that he died. I thought he was still doing good. Oh, well. <laughs> Do I put the 19 on the second one? Probably not. Anyway, Poppy, you're up.
Okay, and he steps forward and jumps into the corner. And emerges from the corner up there. And... Poppy, he's just staring at you, so you need to make a fort save. <laughs> it's funny, because Fortitude is my strongest save. And, let's see, that one's going to take a five-foot step and emerge out there. And since that's a five-foot step, he can full attack. And, unfortunately, Eric is uh, not going to get hit at all. song drop off because you know we're already doing that we haven't even countered a serious threat here yet and I'll just full attack this thing and hopefully we can bash through these and if it turns out this is we if it turns out we really do want the bard song I can start burning more of it but I'm trying to conserve it for now Damn it, I just had to crit the one that was gonna die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Number three is still alive, right? Oh yes, he ain't even badly wounded yet. Well, well we know that a 20 hits on these He things. is now. <laughs> miss all three times yep alrighty I missed guys I missed turns out an 18 isn't enough Okay, so we're currently grinding on number three there. Uh-huh. Basically, at this point, all they're seeming to do is damage. We have a big supply of cure wound stuff. We have less of a supply of limited-use powers, right? So we've already seen that this module is willing to throw things at us like that adult nightmare dragon shit. Well, that was the last module, technically, but you get the point. Okay, so presumably my next attack is going to kill this thing if I don't miss. Uh, can I five foot step in the middle of a full attack? Yep. Okay. But obviously just once, right, for the whole round, so. Yeah. Are you not power attacking?
Don't need to. <laughs> Not for the first one, anyway. Okay. And then five foot step. So he gets partial concealment or cover because he's behind Poppy and Melkoth. Definitely would not be concealment. It's up to Wintermute whether he gets cover or partial cover or if Poppy's too short or whatever. The rules uh, for... Like, basically, here's part of the problem, right? Like, if, ha if generally speaking, if more than half of his space is covered by Poppy, I don't factor into this equation. It's only Poppy because of the angle. So if Poppy makes covers at least half of his square, then technically has full cover. If Poppy's half or less, especially due to being small, um, then it'd get partial. And the whole cover rules for ranged weapons are weird in the fir in, in the end place, because in a few levels, for example, you can pick up improved precise shot, which basically says, I don't give a shit about cover at all. So, like, clearly that's not actually a balancing aspect, so I don't get yeah. it. Whatever. <laughs> Okay, uh, what say you? Uh, let's go partial. I have clicked the partial cover button. What was it supposed to do? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, for the longest time I never used that modifier box, but now that I use it, it's it's quite handy. <laughs> no kidding. Of course, I'm still learning Fantasy Grounds. I don't think I'll ever know it all. Just when you think you got it figured out, they change something again on you. It's okay. We never have to worry about Unity ever actually coming out, so... I'm starting to think that. <laughs> Haven't, haven't they been developing that for like 12 years or something? Well, I know a lot of the uh, base code, like the networking and so forth, all had to be rewritten. Well, I'm really surprised they managed to hold it together, promising something for so long and not delivering. Oh, wait a minute, I work for the government. It's just like another day at work. Uh, absolutely. Okay, um... Alright, so we've turned three of the four statue heads, and presumably that big statue is not doing anything yet, right? Uh, correct. Alright, let's skedaddle down to the far end, and then turn the last statue. Presumably we're standing like that again. Okay, the statue heads do appear, and do you really want to fight the hounds, or do you just want to say you did it? <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> They're your hounds. Okay, uh, as you uh, turn the head of uh, statue number four... Um, You can see some movement happening on the uh, statue in the center of the room. Or the center of the hallway there. And uh, the mouths of the four angels start opening. And 
they end up uh, revealing a hole that is a little more than two feet deep. It's under the statue? Uh, uh, the heads kind of slide out of the way. And you see, oh, okay. a, you see a hole that's uh, two foot deep, roughly. Do, uh, am, I, am I able to figure out what the point of these two foot deep holes is? Okay, uh, as as you're, you know, as you walk over and you're looking at everything, uh, you notice that uh, in the base of one of the mouths of the angel on the statue, uh, there appears to be a tongue made out of metal, where the rest of the statue is, you know, like stone. Does it look like a lever or something in effect? Uh, you know, that that's kind of what you're thinking. Okay, uh, with us n not standing in the statue yet, I'm going to try, like, pulling the tongue. Does anything happen? Uh, as you pull the tongue, um... You see these metal steps uh, grind out of the stone, and then they start um, this cover um, kind of slides out of the way of the two foot hole, and you see a shaft going down, and these metal steps grind out of the stone, and then they start spiraling down the step down the shaft providing you a, an easy descent how do you even fit through a two foot hole that's at an angle like that Trust no no this. the hole was the initial hole was only two feet deep oh but it was actually a it was wider than two feet it was uh yes feet yeah okay i'm like Unless we're like dropping down this or something, like a <laughs> shaft, then how, how, how does the angle work on that? Okay, so uh, presumably we will go downstairs. Actually, first of all, before we do that, how about we check out that ladder? To make sure it's what we think it is. Okay, uh, there's a concealed door and... Um when you open it, it does indeed um, open into the meditation chamber. Uh, you can see that the chamber is spherical and it's made of ash and soapstone. And you're pretty sure that when the door is closed, it forms a perfect spear some 20 feet in diameter. And um you know that they used it for meditation anything else in there that's relevant um are you going to stick your head in or are you actually going into the chamber I imagine we're actually going into the chamber to investigate to make sure it seems safe for coming back later, potentially. Um, as you're all in, in the chamber and so forth, um, y you have a vision and uh, you can see this um, <sighs> rocky sandstone cliffs start to flicker in and out of existence and 
um, you see yourself alone there and there's a singular blurry form uh, that you know as it starts to get clearer you see um, the image of an elderly calcite woman and a strange creature with a conical body topped with four rubber appendages and this merged form starts to reach out to touch you but before it does uh, the vision vanishes but you saw an old woman and a strange creature with a cone-shaped body with four rubber appendages at the top And I'll ask the, the and Seth if they had a similar experience. I assume we did. Yes, you did. Oh, uh, yeah. So, we basically saw another one of those dark young, dark young as shoved in a goose things. Uh, and this one was different. Uh, this one wasn't, was what, sorry? Uh, this one did not look like a dark young. Okay, yeah. with my knowledge, I'm guessing it's probably an aberration from how weird it looks. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and burn another one of my book charges, but not my lore master. So... With that, with a 43, uh, do I recognize the creature? Um, yes, uh, you know that it's a Yithian. And uh, eons ago they inhabited a dying world and in order to escape their doomed planet uh, they cast their minds through time and space and eventually coming to a rest in the strange alien bodies that they possess today and um, you know that there they have the ability to astrally project themselves to explore other planets and they're eager to find new worlds to explore and uh, you know that when it arrives upon a new world it often swaps minds with the creature it encounters so you know it can experience the world as if it was a native Um, I'm guessing it's not doing this with willing people who are willing to have their minds swapped? Uh, yes, uh, they can be willing. Uh, um, yeah, they're, they're just trying to experience the world as a native, and... Uh, you know, the other person gets to experience what it's like to be an aberration. Do they usually, from my knowledge, take willing transferees, or do they just go in and take over people without their, you know, consent? <clears throat> um, really, from what you can remember, um... You don't know a whole lot about it because generally people that have been mind swapped like that only truly remember the truth as a nightmare. 
Okay, well that doesn't sound good. That does not sound like a willing thing. <clears throat> But you know they they only they only can recall bits and fragments, and then generally that's only when they're asleep. So they basically go into other people and take over their minds, possess them, and then strip them of the ability to remember that that even happened. They enslave people's minds. Mm, yeah, that would probably be. Uh... Um. I don't want to say yes to that. <laughs> okay, like, I'm just trying, I'm trying, basically it's like saying that they're like, hey, I'm more important than you, so I'm going to astrally project, find a native, take over their mind, just because I have the power to do so, and they can't stop me, and then after I'm bored, you know, using their body while they're trapped, some, you know, helplessly someplace else or something, right, then I'll swap it back, and I won't even give them the ability to remember that it happened or remember the experience that they had while we were swapped, right? I'm just literally going to leave them, like, have a broken mind in that regard that can't remember it but has nightmares about the experience as a weird fragment. Uh, you do I know... I feel like this is something we're going to be clean. Uh, you would know that the race is, uh, overall lawful neutral. Doesn't exactly sound lawful neutral to me. That sounds like mind rape. <laughs> Like I'm not, and I don't use that term loosely here because it is literally taking over someone else's mind, living in them for potentially years or something, right? This isn't like a short term, let me borrow your body for five minutes, right? Like if they're experiencing life as natives, right, it's probably going to take a while to experience it as native. And then one day, you know, so you, you, you basically, you know, it's Tuesday, you know, in January, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see this weird creature and then the next thing you know you can, can't even you just have this nightmare of this weird creature that approached you and then there's like a six month gap of nothing you can remember because it was using you during that time and you don't remember anything that happened it's literally destroying your life <laughs> yeah pretty much I mean, it's, it's enslavement of other people's bodies. This isn't like a, hey, you want to experience you know, life on my world and I can experience life on yours. That's a friendly trade that leaves them in memories. It, it, you said it was nightmares, so... As to your point. So, do you want to go down the shaft? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I, I can imagine a lot of people, <laughs> both in real life and in the fantasy world, right? If you were given the option between literally losing complete control of your body, right, and mind and thoughts and everything for, like, a year or more, right, or dying in battle, a lot of people would probably not rather, would not, don't want their autonomy, you know, completely rendered null. Well, uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're swapped. You swap minds with the Yithikin. He takes over your body, you get his. Or but hers. You don't remember that. Or gender oh, in specific. It's a nightmare, you said. Right? You don't have any memory of what it's like to be a Yithian? Uh, well, you have no first hand knowledge. You're just, you know, remembering a fragment you've read at one point in time. Which in the Pathfinder world is as good as, like, scientific experiments. <laughs> you find it on an ancient scroll someplace, a fragment of assistance, it must be true. <laughs> so, anyway, I got a new map. Let me unmask it. I mean, if somebody just walked up to you and was like, I'm going to cast Dominate Person on you for, you know, six months, but then you're not going to remember anything that happened or even the fact that I told you I was going to do this, do you think that was like a law, a, a, a neutral aligned creature to enslave you for six months that you won't ever remember? No, I probably wouldn't. 
and stairs terminate. Ah. Y'all couldn't have made that a little more clear. And you all come down the stairs and you emerge right in the middle of a set of interconnecting hallways. Uh, you can see statues in, to the west and to the north of your location. Okay, well, let's go west. If we move along over to there, what do we see? Okay, as you go west... Oh boy, another statue. Check its head. Sorry, their heads. Okay, uh, as you come over that way, um, you see that the shelves in this section of the library hold hundreds of books bound with red leather. Um, Okay, uh, as I said, this section of the library holds hundreds of books bound in red leather. And Eric, as you walk into the room, I'd actually move you back five feet. Uh, you see two of these. Um, they're half. They're half-formed eyes. Uh, Toothless mouths, gaping throats, and countless other malformed organs constantly forming and dissolving all over this monster surface. And you are aware of two of them in the room. Uh, what do I know about those things? Besides the fact they have too, too many eyes and mouths. Uh, you know that, uh, well, with your roles, you know that they're a proto Shagoth. And that um, they were an early attempt by the Elder Things to create life. But uh, it resulted in these strange heaving masses of protoplasm that displayed a disturbing hunger for living flesh. And, um, wow, they weigh about 160 pounds and they're capable of forming all manners of hideous and nauseating shapes. They are um, immune, immune to critical, immune to precision. Uh, they've got DR5. 
Um, they've got acid resistance, uh, electric, fire, and have fast healing. <laughs> you know that if one kills you, um, there's, uh, you become the potential host for a new one. Uh, and that their bite, um, that their bite would contain disease, for lack of another word. <laughs> <laughs> and that one or more can merge together in a full round action that does provoke an attack of opportunity. But uh, they can merge together and form a large one. Oh, this ought to be fun. Okay. What about I'm sorry? Do they have any resistances? Uh, immune to critical, immune to precision. Uh, they do have DR5. They resist acid, electric, fire. Or they are resistant. <laughs> it's okay. Our alchemist has some force bombs or frost bombs he can use. And, uh, needless to say, uh, they see you, so it's time to roll for initiative. And you all are so gonna force me to turn max hit points back on. <laughs> Keep in mind, being most people say at high levels, and we're getting there, Pathfinder becomes rocket tag, where fights are generally over in like two to three rounds. Now, in my specific camp, in the campaigns I'm running, I'm throwing some of the rules out the wayside and like giving maximized hit points to everyone and doing some other stuff to reduce that, but you're playing by the quote unquote rules still, so. <laughs> And yeah. since I know that Sith does not have any bomb types apparently besides acid and fire, I'm not even going to bother saying what to do because they're resist. How resistant are they? Are they like minor resistant, stand, you know, higher resistance, massively resistance? Uh, higher. So, and in game terms, I'm kind of phrasing that as the fact that like at levels at level one, someone who casts energy resistance resists ten. Once you're level 7, they resist 20. Once they're level 13, they resist 30. So if you're saying it's higher but not max, I'm assuming you mean that to be that they have like 20 resistance. Uh, no. Uh, it would be minor then. Okay. And these things have DR, you said 5 or something like that? Uh, DR 5. And it's just flat DR? Flat DR. And they can combine to create this hulking monstrosity thing. Yes. I'll okay. shout up one fast, Sith. Yeah, are you going to cast haste? Um, you can delay, yeah. On these things, I'll burn a haste. Okay. So, you, you want to delay until after me or something, I suppose you can. I will do that. I will delay until after haste. And I'll put on my rapid shot. Poppy. I suppose I should probably delay as well. Hmm. 
Okay. And number five. It's going to move up and it's going to try to slam into Eric. And that would be a hit. Eric, uh, you feel one of its whatever in the hell. <laughs> uh, it has grabbed you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hit someone the first round of combat? <laughs> it's the grappled part that's bothering me. I'm trying to look up all the freaking rules for it. I have this nice little flow chart. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at stuff beyond that. <laughs> For example, there's no point in me doing a CMB check because my CMB is six. So uh, even with plus two from heroism, unless it's unless its CMD is less than like 26, uh, I'm only succeeding on a 20, which I don't expect is going to happen. Then escape artist I don't have. I have acrobatics and fly from dance, but none of the bard acknowledges give the ability to get out of grapple like that. Um, If I try to do a spell, I have to do a concentration check of 10 plus the grappler's CMB plus the level of the spell I'm casting. So my concentration check would be a plus 15, I think. So if I'm trying to cast haste, for example, that's a base DC of 13 plus its CMB. Seventeen. You're saying that's what it's be. It's B, uh, CMB is. Yep. Okay, so it's a DC thirty. So I would need to roll a fifteen or better. So I'd have a thirty percent chance to cast a spell if grappled right now. That's not very good odds. <laughs> well, uh, if it helps uh, you with your decision, um, you did get hit by this thing. Okay. No. Yeah, if if I've got you, if I've hit you and I've got you grappled. I can do the constrict special attack, correct? Oh god, yes. I think it might be in future rounds and travel. I'll check. 
I think constrict is what you do on future rounds when you maintain the grapple, and it allows you to do the constrict damage when you successfully okay. maintain in addition to other damage, I think. Uh, we'll go with that. You had to fucking bring grapple into this. <laughs> Okay, Eric. Okay, no, they, they issued an FAQ because it wasn't clear. Here's the actual answer. So in this case, it would constrict. So you would take an extra four points of damage, and then I need you to make a uh, fortitude save. Okay, um, yeah, you're good. Is there anything else you'd like to do? I haven't done anything yet. I'm still trying to figure out what I can do. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. My character would know what could do, what he could do in game if grappled. The fact that you didn't warn me that we were going to be grappled, make sure it's like up to date on the five pages of grapple rules, ain't my fault here. <laughs> For example, I'm trying to check. It says you can use a wand while grappling, but I'm not sure if it requires me to make a concentration check. Because normally I can just pull out a wand and use it, it even in, like, if I've got five guys surrounding me, right? All trying to take an attack of opportunity to interrupt my spell casting. I think if I pull out a wand and use it, I don't think it triggers that. So I. Perhaps I can pull out a wand and use that if grappled without needing to make the concentration check, but I'm not sure. That's why I'm, I'm having to check this here. Reading magic items while grappling. This from 2003. Uh, let's just say you do need to make a concentration check, and... <laughs> okay, so it says this. So all I have to do is point in the general direction of the target. That's very different than requiring somatic components where I have to, you know, craft my hands in specific gestures. Correct. So, if I'm not having to actually do somatic components, in that case, well, I guess. What does grapple talking do? Grapple condition. So pinned creatures can only cast spells that do not have somatic components, which seems to implicitly apply that even if you're grappled, that even if you want to cast somatic component, uh, even without somatic components, you still have to make the concentration check. Because basically, even if it's verbal only, it looks like you have to make a concentration check for pinned. Ergo, if it's verbal and somatic, if it's verbal only for grappled, you'd still have to make the concentration check. And the wand requires you to be pointing it in the right direction, which would probably be enough to make a concentration check. 
Okay. Are, at this point, I'm lost. Are you trying to figure out whether or not you can use the wand? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what I can do, period, right now. It specifically says under wands. Yeah, but I'd have to make a concentration check, and the concentration, we think. We're not sure, because the rules aren't clear, because grapple is a big fucking mess. And what's, what's the spell that the wand casts? I'm not even sure yet. I'd have to figure it out. Uh, I was thinking something like invisibility or glitter dust or so, and some other options. Um, what would glitter dust do against a blob? Potentially blind it. It has eyes. Ah. I, I don't know. I think you can use the wand as long as you have the ability to speak. Well, the question is not whether you can use the wand. The question is whether you can use the wand without having to make a concentration check to use the wand, since it has me grabbed and is shaking me around or whatever. That's the problem. It doesn't say it doesn't require a concentration check. And it, it, like Even if you're pinned, it seems to imply that you have... Even if you're doing a verbal-only spell that requires no gestures, if you're pinned, it still requires concentration on your part. Because, like, the guy has control over you, or whatever. So, let's say it requires concentration. Uh-huh. New plan. I'm, even if it's annoying because of just who's doing what in the party, Poppy's always entering the rooms first. And I'll just shout, get this thing off me, I can't cast. But I'll do so in a way that's very inspiring. <laughs> and I'm going to fight defensively. Actually, you know what, this, this next thing's probably coming for you. I'm just going into fucking total defense. Okay, so. uh, question. So, can I bomb it while it's got grappled with Eric, or would that hit Eric? You can do that, as long as you have the precise bombs, which you do. I have precise bombs, and I have rapid bomb. Uh, but someone was not able to cast haste on me, so I'm kind of bummed a little bit, gotta say. This Eric. is why we should have just had Poppy go first. So I, uh, I'll i take a minus two penalty because I'm more than one range increment away. How far away are you? 35 feet. Target, if you target it? 30 feet. Yeah, you're 30 feet. Range increment on a bomb is only 20 feet. Okay. So one and a half range increment. That's fine. Uh it's its touch armor class, which I can't imagine the touch armor class on a blob of crap being that big. But we'll see. I don't know. So I always get this mixed up. I'm supposed to attack with the uh, spell. Bombs. Attack with the spell. Okay. And then I put the I just put the minus five on the next attack. <laughs> what the fuck is that all about? It's the sounds thing I imagine that one to me came up with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that means you failed, brother. <laughs> with the first bomb. That hit. And that hit, so they got hit twice, and then I got to figure out where the first bomb went. So let me give my damage to him first. Uh, 
So it's a reduction 10, which sucks. Uh, that, uh. Well, that, that damage reduction would apply to the uh, acid damage also, right? So should I even bother putting that on? I would say probably not. Because it's presumably it's two individual 1d6 ticks, and if the thing right. resists 10, then it can never actually yeah. affect it. And then I roll a d8. Five. So that one bomb that missed went behind it. Oh. To there. So the thing takes splash damage from it then? I, if you miss with the bomb, does it still do splash damage like normal? I thought it didn't. I think everything just takes splash damage at that point, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. So it does bomb's minimum damage, so I don't know if you made a separate weapon for that. No, I didn't do minimum damage, but minimum damage, so I do 6d6 plus 8, so it takes... Oh yeah, I do have one. Hold on here just a sec. Here. And it also gets a reflex save. Oh yeah, reflex save for half. But it's going to fail that, so you probably shouldn't even bother doing it. <laughs> 23 work. <laughs> Whatever. So it takes... Two points. Well, takes nothing. Takes nothing. <laughs> that was a waste. <sighs> Alright, I did the best I could. Sorry. I guess Eric's going to get... Poppy, you got to save him. So I'm just going to charge. Charge the monster. That would be lovely, hey, except it's immune to crits. All right. Oh well. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me cut that seventy down to twenty-two. Yeah, I think the the program's ahead of you on that one. Oh, you didn't power attack either. Hmm. I just like put power attack on permanently or something for now. Uh, number seven's gonna come up and well, yeah. Since the other one has Eric grappled, it makes sense that it would attack Eric. And surprisingly, Eric moves out of the way. And let's see. To maintain it, it's my CMB against your CMD. Oh. Oh. Wow. Well, you managed to break free there, Eric. Now, technically speaking, you do get a plus five bonus <clears throat> on maintaining the grapple. Do you include that? Uh, no, I did not. But I'll remember that next time, because, uh, well, he can attack since he lost the grapple, right? No, it's a standard action to maintain standard. the grapple. However, do you include the fact that grab gives him another plus four for possessing grab? Was his, was his CMB... Uh, 17 before or after counting the grab feature. Uh, his CMB is, uh, plus 17. Because if he has grab, then he gets a plus, I think he gets a plus 4 bonus on top of that in all grapple attacks. 
Okay, so that would have been a 23. Creatures with the grab special attack receive. Yeah. This is the relevant thing. Right there. <laughs> okay, so 23. So basically, it's a pl it gets like a plus 9 total on it, doesn't it, right? 5 from the bonus to maintain the grapple, and 4 from possessing the grab feature. So you're saying you're basically grappled? I think it beat the CMD by a point or two. You know, you can double check by adding plus 9 onto that. I think my CMD right now is 30. So if you add on 9 from that and then you subtract 2 from being grappled, I think it literally tied. How do you add 9 to the roll? Add the modifier box, put in a 9, then drag the attack back onto me. Ah, I did not know you could do that. Yeah, he missed. Well, oh, actually, okay. So I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is a 28 normally actually should hit me. Well, that's the bad news, I guess, whatever. The good news is that this is still the correct result because you did not put the grappled effect on myself and the creature. So if you put grappled on it and grappled on me, we both have a minus two to, like, attacks, which would then cancel out, in effect. So... So since it effectively would cancel out, since you didn't have it on it, it you, and you didn't have it on me, this result, I believe, is correct. Okay, we'll go with that. You brought in grapples. Don't blame me for what you decided to bring back to the game. Okay, Eric. I will five foot step back. Oh shit, at this point... Um, fuck it, I hate these things. I'm going to continue my bard song, and I'm going to cast Freedom of Movement on Poppy. So please kill one fast. Okay. I guess oh, I got to mark off my bombs from last time. There we go. And now I'm going to mark off three more bombs. So I'm still not hasted, right? So oh, I will attack. There you go. Okay. And then the one next to it needs to make three saving throws for first slash damage. What's the DC at this point? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would. Plus half your level plus your int modifier, so it's fifteen plus your int modifier, which is like eight. So DC twenty three, I think. Twenty three. Uh, it failed one. So it takes, uh, four points of damage. Well, okay, right, there's no variables at all. Okay, so your minimum damage, hang on a second, whoa, 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 let's back up a second here. I don't think that's right. So your splash damage is 66, right? Yep. So that's six minimum. Plus eight from your intelligence, that's 14. Right. Plus one from Point Blake shot, that's 15. 
plus three for my bard song, that's 18, plus 1d6 for my discordant voice. That's a lot more. That that all applies to the splash damage? It's a weapon attack. Oh, okay. It, well, if that's true, then yeah, I did not take it to... Um, point that's why... shot, I didn't think of applied so I yeah, didn't quite uh, all, all that shit applies as far as I know it's, a, it's again it's it's a weapon attack as far as I know okay. well the basic is 14 and then 15 sure 15, but 17. So did you make it, as long as you have a we, as long as you have a weapon created for it for the splash damage you can just use that oh okay so yeah I do all right well hold on then So I'm going to take the four points of damage off of him. Okay. Yeah, thing. If you picked up four levels of fighter, you could take weapon specialization bomb, for example. See, it didn't apply any of the other other damage. It only applied the four. So the other four, you would have to. Did you just use that from a spell effect, or did you use that from a weapon up at the top under weapons? Oh, from a spell effect. Right, that never applies to the other stuff. That's why you had a separate weapon effect for bombs. The spells oh, ignore it. So annoying. Um, okay. I would just oh. honestly delete the damage part of the, the bombs from the spells so you never get that mixed up. So you have attack only under spells and damage only up top. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to give him 8 points of damage, right? Or 14. Yes, it would be 8 plus 1d6 Sonic. So roll a d6. It would take a total of 13. Okay. Anything else you want to do, Seth? <laughs> I believe I've I've foobarred this enough. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, can Poppy kill it in one round or not? I'm gonna go with probably. God, I bet you all wish you were hasted. <laughs> okay, we're, uh... <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> And then, ooh, guess what I'm going to do next? Try and grapple me? Oh. And it grapples out at Poppy, and its tendrils slap into Poppy, and they just bumped away from Poppy, and it fails because Poppy has freedom of movement. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> this is why I'm sending you in first. You have freedom for movement now, Poppy. Thank you, Eric. I will five foot step up and pray that we actually kill this thing this round. It's another round of Inspire Courage. Okay, it's time for the alchemist to miss. Um, yeah, hold on just a sec here. I'm fixing my uh, post post 14 crit one. I'm trying to fix my my uh, damage thing that I gotta do here in a sec. That's all right. 
You know, I have two games that I'm trying to figure out how to kill the alchemist. Our awesomeness is just killing you, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, so let me mark off three more bombs because now this ugly spud is still with us. And then I'll probably switch from bombs after this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm here till Thursday. Don't forget to tip your waitresses. Why even bother giving a fast healing five? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. Uh, you managed to, um, <laughs> defeat both of them. And, uh... I'll uh, back against the wall and say, I, why, why don't you go first, no one? <laughs> um... You can tell that this portion of the library is um, dedicated to a philosopher wizard and dedicated worshipper of Nethus named uh, Avarisum Grant, who um, she pinned uh, hundreds of things on magic in the century before her death. Um, mm -hmm. You see the little plaque, but uh, otherwise, other than books from, that you may find, uh, that's all of any interest in this area. Okay. And, guys, this is a uh, really good spot to stop for the night. Okay. <laughs> Uh, before it gets any more. You just want us to end with nightmares of being getting grappled and consumed. Uh, yes, I do. Or, you know. I think he wants to re retire and lick the Proto Shogoth's wounds. And. Because that's not weird at all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a really good spot to stop for the night. Alright, uh, we're on for next week? Uh, yes we are. Uh, I have finally got around to updating the calendar, so, uh, yeah, we are scheduled for, uh, the next two weeks. Perfect. Okay. okay. We'll see you guys next ha week. Happy Thanks. St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. It's Poppy's day. Uh, <laughs> <There> <laughs> no kidding. Uh, Y'all have User a great evening. From your channel. Bye. See you. User See ya. disconnected from your channel. Tracking ground. <laughs> yep. Uh, have a good nightmare over that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab a late dinner, and I am off to bed. I am dragging this week. All right, see you later. All right, see you, Eric. User disconnected from your channel.